If I had to, I would put myself right beside you. So let me ask, would you like that? Would you like that? And I don't mind if you say this love is the last time. So now I'll ask, would you like that? Would you like that? <laughs> Something's getting in the way. Something's just about to break. I still try to find my place in the diary of Jane. So tell me how it should be. Chin Dobra YouTube, excuse my blemish, this is from uh, eating too many donuts. Envy Tommy to another episode of Atticus Eats. Today, by popular demand and request, we are checking out the Chicken Crazy. Chin dobre, cool people. I am so happy to be back with you all, my very dear friends. Uh, this is so awesome. I have missed you all profusely in uh, my time absent from being able to record some Atticus Eats videos. It has been deathly, deathly hot out here in Southern California. Triple digits. And yeah, I, I, I didn't feel like just, you know, baking all the time. But we, we're in a cold spell. It's back in the 90s, so that's really nice. And uh, it was really cool. Back when I did my Del Taco video, um, there were many of you who requested, number one, go to an actual Hispanic food restaurant. I will. I have a few of those that I've looked up online that I want to take a jaunt down to and go explore and see. Uh, but then there were many of you who were like, hey, you need to go to El Pollo Loco. And uh, I am so thankful that you all said that because El Pollo was actually uh, a place that my mom and I would go to all the time when I was younger. Um, and we're talking little, little boy on up through growing up. And, uh, and so I'm very happy that we get to come out here today, have some El Pollo, and just be able to chill. I do have some more uh, community curated questions that you all have asked me over the course of several videos from the last few months. And uh, I'm definitely going to be getting to those. But right now we're going to eat. And so my dear friends, let's take a look at what we have to offer. A little bit nasty that they don't even put plastic over their uh, utensils. Like, that's kind of gross, because I don't know who sneezed on this or breathed on it or whatever. So, hopefully, you know, we're all good. I'll use my fork of power here. Uh, but here, let me put this down and I'll get my stuff. Very good, high-quality napkins. And what's actually funny is this El Pollo that I'm going to here today is actually pretty new. Um, there are multiple... El Pollo Locos, like, everywhere, right? Um, you can find them anywhere. Um, but this one in particular, I was driving by, and, and I'm like, wait, this whole area here is kind of, like, new development, and, uh, this is a newer El Pollo. I don't know how long it's been here, but it, it has not been here that long, and when I say that, I mean, like, probably a year, thereabouts, but when I looked it up on Google, this only gets a 3.3 star review, like, rating on Google. And you can, like, get pretty far with Google reviews. You always have to take it with a grain of salt, anything on the internet for that matter. Uh, but, but when I went in there, it was very clean. It was very nice. Everybody was kind of on it as far as making the food, preparing the food, etc. So, I'm not too sure what those reviews were. You know what I mean? That made it go down several notches, but what have you. We're here. We are here. We're ready to go. We're going to have some fun. I got a two-piece meal because that's what I can afford. <laughs> and actually, thankfully, it seems pretty decent size, pretty decent heft. I like the container. It's got the old, 
you know, mission sign on it, but uh, there's no coloration or anything anymore. Now, the thing that I love about El Pollo, that I've always loved about El Pollo, is this right here. The green sauce. The green sauce is where it's at, as far as, you know, uh, sauce and something that's very specific to El Pollo that I really like. And so this is really cool. I am a flour tortilla guy. If you go to El Pollo Loco, tell me what your usual order is. Um, I got the two-piece meal. Um, I got the leg and the thigh, because I'm a dark meat guy. And then I also, it's a very Americanized Hispanic food meal. I, I was in the, I wanted to be healthy, because otherwise there'd be people in the comment section saying I'm going to die. So I got broccoli. But then I also got mashed potatoes, because I've been getting El Pollo mashed potatoes my whole life. Like, uh, forever, you know, so... Very excited for this today. It looks good. They didn't just give me burnt pieces, which I've had happen before. So, uh, that's really cool. I'm definitely a fan of that. Not having burnt pieces, I mean. Um, everything is pretty lava hot. So, I'm definitely going to need to take a minute or two to let everything cool down. But, uh, this is looking pretty good. It smells fantastic. While I'm waiting for everything to cool down and I'm getting situated, go ahead and grab yourself a beverage or a snack and eat with me. And be sure to tell me in the comment section below what it is that you're actually eating with me. This is cool. Like, for dashboard dining, that's actually a pretty good setup. You've got your compartmentalization for everything. You know what I mean? Everything's looking pretty good, pretty fresh. Smells amazing. I'm definitely salivating, but, uh, yeah, we got some, we got some goods and services here, my friends. I have missed you all so very much. I know I've been doing the behind-the-scenes videos, you know, here on the channel. If you haven't seen those, please do check them out, behind the scenes of Season 9 of The Middle. But, uh, man, just to be able to be back here and eating a meal with all of you, my internet friends. How amazing is that? It's, it's such a good time. I've missed you all profusely. I'm happy to be back. My beverage... So, okay. This was funny. This is a two-piece meal. As a as a 26-year-old American who's grown up, I have always known that if you get a meal, there's always a drink included. When I went here and I asked them for uh, the two-piece meal... The two-piece for the thigh and the leg was $9 and change. The lady asked me, do you want it with a drink or without? And I go, wait, but it's a meal. Doesn't it come with a drink? And then she just didn't answer me. And all of a sudden, I saw it go from $9 and change up to $12 and change. So, anyway, but I got my drink, and actually, I did not know they had this here, but my favorite tea, I have a favorite tea, I'm a coffee guy, but I do have a favorite cold tea. My favorite cold tea is the Fuse brand raspberry tea. I absolutely love it. It is so absurdly refreshing, and I'm in a place in my life, and I have been for several years now, where I really don't drink soda anymore. I stick with things like water, or coffee, or Zevia, which is a sugar-free soda, and it doesn't have any of the horrible, like, aspartame stuff. But when I want a flavored drink that's cold and refreshing, at Subway, I'll get this fused raspberry tea, and it's mom's favorite drink as well, and uh, they had it here. And I was like, yo, this is a great uh, place to be able to put in my favorite tea drink, which is fused raspberry tea. So, Nesdorovia, cheers, everyone. Amazing. So wonderful and refreshing and delicious. I've got all my nappy kins prepared. Like I said, I am a flour tortilla guy, and I remember when these used to be, you know, about twice the size that they are now, at least. <sighs> what are you going to do? Oh. Mmm. Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. I am a person who has the chemical makeup where I cannot eat cilantro usually 
it tastes like soap but this for whatever reason even with it having the cilantro in it this is so wonderful to me i am a huge fan of the el pollo green salsa whatever the official term is for that okay this broccoli feels hard when i stab it with a fork It's actually pretty good texture-wise. It's not mushy. It has a bite to it. Um, normally, when I go to restaurants and I get broccoli, they over-salt it. They'll put something on it somehow, some way, that becomes way, 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 way too salty. And it's disgusting. This is the exact opposite of that, where I don't think they salted this at all. Yeah. And uh, they don't have butter on it or anything. I'm I'm literally just each eating, you know, <laughs> a, a plain vegetable. I feel like Kevin in the office when his when his um, New Year's resolution was to eat vegetables. And Michael forced him to eat the broccoli, and he was begging for Cheese Whiz or something. Yeah, that's what it feels like now. Let's get one more in us, and then we'll conveniently forget that I have broccoli. Yeah, that's terrible. It's not terrible. It's just very plain. And earthy. Here we go, I'll fix it. That's much better. Mmm. Okay, that is much better. That right there. I have always adored El Pollo mashed potatoes because they're so creamy. And then their brown gravy that they put on top of it. Heavenly. Definitely ethereal and heavenly. Let's pick apart our thigh here. Nice, tender, moist chicken. Hopefully I don't drop that. Look at that. Look at that. Mmm. Mmm. Friends. That is significantly, significantly better than other El Pollos I've been to recently. Genuinely. Last time Mom and I went to El Pollo, it was near the beginning of the year, and it was like one of the ones that's like off of a freeway, right? And we went there, and man, it was literally as if they gave us the worst food possible. Everything. Sides were terrible. Mashed potatoes didn't have any gravy on them. Meat was burnt. This is not that case, my friends. Oh my goodness. <laughs> let's, let's dip it. Hopefully I don't spill. A little bit of green sauce on that. Mmm. 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 Mm-hmm. Raising my hands for that. I'm raising my hands and praising the Lord for that. That is good. That is super good. I was mentioning this on my live stream. And please be sure to check the links in the description box below. There's a link to my Twitch channel. And I go live three times a week. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Definitely come hang out. Join us. Obey the rules. Be kind. But, I was mentioning this in a stream, I think last week, where I was saying how as I get older, I tend to veer away from red meat. And even things like pork. I'm not craving it as much. It's just too much for me. Too grizzly, too fatty. 
but I love poultry. Love chicken. Absolutely love chicken. I've always loved chicken. I especially love chicken now. And um, I really love fish and things like turkey and stuff like that, right? That's just what I've tended to air toward if I want a protein. Now, I still love my burgers, obviously. And I love things like pepperoni, salami, you know, things like that. But yeah, like I'm not going to go out of my way to get a ham or something like that. I tend toward the poultry and the fish. So. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Flavor-wise, the potatoes are excellent. I am noticing that they're just a little bit runny, though. Just a little. Not enough to make you gag, but I'm definitely drinking these potatoes. As opposed to chewing them. If that makes sense. It doesn't want to give. Okay. Mm hmm. Comment below. What is your favorite protein that you enjoy eating? Are you a chicken person? A poultry as a whole person? Do you prefer fish? Are you vegetarian? Are you vegan? Where do you fall on this glorious spectrum? Tell me. Mmm. Now, this is cool. So what a lot of people don't know is when I was little, so this entire piece of tortilla is rock hard. See that? That's terrible. Not gonna have that. The rest of it's okay. A lot of people don't know. One of my hobbies, when I was really, really, really little, that my mom was so precious, and she encouraged and she supported me in, is I actually used to play chess. I used to play chess in tournaments when I was little. And so when I would go meet with my little chess coach and the group that he had had, we would do our meets, and then that was usually later on in the afternoon, and then I would usually be hungry when I was done, and so mom would always be so sweet, and she would have us go out and go somewhere and get a treat. One of the treats that was on the way home was El Pollo Loco, and so I have many fond memories of it being after a chess meet, or maybe some sort of homeschool thing, or mom and I going to a museum, uh or doing a field trip or something like that, of being able to go to El Pollo, and we would always share food. I think they had a popcorn chicken that I would always get. But then mom, mom would let me eat some of her little pieces of chicken or mashed potatoes or something like that, depending on what we could afford on any given day, and then, um, you know, go from there. But what I always remember is I would always get the tortillas, right? Love the flour tortillas, and I would always roll them up like this, like a like a tortilla whistle or a cigar. And I would take them, and I would dip them into the green sauce, just like this. Mm-hmm. And I've been doing it ever since. Oh my goodness, still love that. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm. I would definitely buy that for a dollar. so good. My dear friends, give me a minute. I'm going to polish off my lunch, and then uh, when I come back, 
I'm going to be answering some questions that you all have asked me in the comment section. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Alrighty, cool people. I scarfed the uh, rest of my vittles there. And um, it was so unfortunate. I, I was eating the chicken and I polished off the mashed potatoes. And then I, I ate my flour tortilla. And I got so full, I, uh, I totally forgot that I had my broccoli left over. Oh no. Yeah, so, oh well. Continuing on, I'm gonna give El Pollo a solid 7.5 out of 10 today. Um, there is an unmistakable flavor profile and taste to El Pollo Loco, the chicken crazy, that um, is so good. But, you can only handle it in doses, and uh, it depends on the piece of meat that you get, right? I was eating my thigh with you on camera, and I switched to the leg, and that drumstick, man, excuse me, it was actually pretty tough, pretty stringy. I left a lot of meat on there because there's just a lot of, I don't know, like tough tendons and fat and stuff like that, and I'm normally a drumstick guy. Whenever I get fried chicken or baked chicken or whatever it might be, I'll demo the drumsticks. But this one was a little bit tough. And those mashed potatoes, they were really runny. They were really runny. They were good. And you get that gravy and you're like, oh, dopamine surge. And then you, you keep eating where you have to get down lower and it's to the plain section, the section that the gravy hasn't hit. And you're like, oh, this is a little soupy. But the fused raspberry tea, iced tea, that's where it's at. Mm. Amazing. On that note, let's take a couple questions from the comment section. And then we'll wrap up today's video. I love hanging out with you all today. Such a fun time. Such a fun time. If you have any other questions that you want to ask me, my dear friends, I'll say this in advance now. Questions that I can answer in subsequent Atticus Eats videos. Please be sure to leave them in the comment section below. If you see somebody who has left a, uh, a question in the comment section below, give that, that comment a thumbs up. That way it pushes it up toward the top where I can see it. And then hopefully be able to answer your questions and not have any be missed. So, Val Smiling on YouTube, and I'm and I'm getting these usernames. YouTube will change the usernames. On one screen it's one, and on another screen it changes it. But still the same person. So if this is you, you are who you are. You know who you are. Thank you. Val Smiling on YouTube says, Did you do commercials when you were young? Fantastic question. If I'm not mistaken, I don't know that commercials are listed on IMDb. They might be. I think they are, but it's just further down the list. If you if you look me up on IMDb.com, that stands for the Internet Movie Database, um, and search my name, uh, it's pretty much my resume, so you can see everything that I've ever done in my career. But, um, yes, to directly answer this question, yes. I have been able to do several commercials when I was young. I got to do commercials for the AIG insurance company, which was insanely fun. That was the very first time I ever got to go to New York with my mom, was to film that commercial. And I was super, super, super little. Like, we're talking, I think, eight at the time. And it was such an incredibly fun time. Got to meet a lot of really cool people. I did a couple commercials for them. I've done several commercials for Chevy. A Chevy. Um, and uh, that was a lot of fun. And a bunch of other ones. I think Burger King. I've done a lot of voiceover spots for commercials. So yeah, I've, I've definitely done more than my few, more than more than a few uh, commercials in my career, which were a lot of fun. Commercials are very unique too because you're literally trying to start and end a project in one day, usually one day of filming. And when you do the commercials, um, it's literally just repeating the same scene over and over and over and over again, but doing it as many different ways as possible. That way, the buying company. For example, like AIG, the insurance company, they can pick which version they like the most and assemble a, a commercial together. So it's a lot of fun. In television world and movie world, you know, you're going to definitely take time on a scene, but there's really only so much that you want to do because the writer and the overall script and the story and whatever, you know, it, it tells the story as a whole. So everybody has a pretty good idea of what direction the, the scene is supposed to go in. Whereas the commercial is all one big piece in 
30 seconds, let's say. And so, you know, lots of different versions are taken. I remember for AIG, we did 167 takes, I want to say. I think that was the final number. Man, it was, a, it was a long day, but it was a fun day. It was really cool. It was really cool. I missed that. That was a lot of fun. Olivia on YouTube, have you read any good books lately? Love this question. Love it very much. Um, yes, I have. I have been able to actually get into the Chronicles of Narnia series. I've just been in this mood to read Lewis. And uh, Mom and I, we only read uh, The Magician's Nephew when I was very, very young. It was actually around the time when the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe movie came out. And Mom was so cool. That was a real treat. We went to the El Capitan Theater down in Hollywood. And they had a whole beautiful exhibit on the Chronicles of Narnia. Where you could go down and look at the costumes. And look at the props. And look at all of the different things that they had that made the movie. And uh, it was like a museum exhibit. And then you could go in and... and uh, and watch the movie in that beautiful, beautiful theater. And they had the lion's head and everything. And that is one of my most magical, precious memories that I've ever had in my life with my mom. Uh, absolutely love that. And really gave me a bug for movies, good movies, and storytelling as a whole. And of course, all of the beautiful messaging. All the, all the beautiful messaging that that movie implied. And, and even more, the, the books imply that C.S. Lewis writes into the books. It was such an incredible time. And so, in my journey for myself of being able to read through the series, my goal is to read through the whole series all the way through the last battle. And uh, I just finished The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and I'm about ready to start The Horse and His Boy. And I'm so excited for that. I cannot wait uh, to read through it. I've just been riveted with being able to read the books and actually see it in the written form. Uh, and they're illustrated too, and there's there's absolutely gorgeous drawings in that. So, Olivia, thank you for your question. That was awesome. Finally, for today's video, uh, I hope I'm saying this right. It's either uh, I'm I'm just gonna take a stab at it again. You know who you are, Justin Nimi two eight seven six. How rigorous was it to shoot, meaning film, and have your lines memorized, especially with the long and late hours? Were you used to it? Was it just normal? That's a great question because Justin is getting into kind of the nitty gritty of um, the work, which is making a television show, at least from the perspective of the actor. It is a lot of work to embody a character and become the character. Um, and that's going to be true across the board no matter who you are as an actor doesn't matter who you are, actor, actress, whatever age, it's always going to be work because you are embodying a, a, a character. You are embodying a different life force. You're embodying someone that is not you, um, and yet you are still at the same time inserting you into that character. So line memorization, depending on the scene, um, presented its own unique challenges because every actor and actress has their own method for remembering lines. And it was so funny. I just, uh, well, not just, this was way earlier this year, but way earlier this year, I did a recording for Adventures in Odyssey, and they had a couple of extra characters, so extra actors came in to play those extra characters. So when I say extra, I mean they're just simply outside of the main cast, but they're still a part, an integral part of the episode. And this one guy in particular, he was laughing, and he was telling me that he once worked with a guy uh, during a theater performance, and this guy memorized his lines based on where the other actors were in a, chore in a choreography setting. And it was funny, because he figured it out, and he totally threw off his, his acting buddy, because he would just stand in different places than what he, he normally would. And this dude who memorized his lines that way absolutely freaked out. So if you're an aspiring actor, don't have that be your method of memorizing lines. <laughs> it will hurt you. For me specifically, it was a combination of um, me having something of a photographic memory where I didn't necessarily memorize the words themselves. I memorized what they looked like on paper. 
and that helped me uh, really through the entirety of the show. So it was as if I was reading the dialogue in my head, like this is what it looks like and therefore this is what it is. But then there's also this, it, it's kind of a, a beautiful thing because it is a skill set when you are acting that I had this method that my mom actually taught me and it's a memorization method period. So spelling a word, uh, memorizing lyrics to a song, you know, whatever it might be, where you kind of have a sing-songy inflection in the uh, word or in the lines, whatever it might be. And that's good because since you need to have inflection and emotion and all of that stuff anyway as you are acting, that ended up really helping me a lot when I would need to do um, certain scenes and memorize certain cadences of dialogue and so it was really it was really helpful that remembering the cadence of something and how that came out really benefited me coupled with what it looked like on paper but that actually is also the technique that I used for memorizing lines of dialogue for the spelling bee episodes which were particularly fun um, that had its own unique challenge because now I'm not just needing to say words I mean to correctly spell words and that was so much fun because I ended up using my sing-songy method to remember how those words were spelled and then I could orate them. So that was a very fun time. But it's, speaking on the rigorousness of it, absolutely yes. I mean, especially at the end when we were working 16-hour days. Fatigue is real. Mental fatigue is extreme. Like that is that is a very real actual challenge that people have to face. And so it definitely did. It took its toll and, uh, and it, it was a lot. It was a lot. But you know what? It was very rewarding. And uh, I know that we all are so grateful for the product that we were able to produce with the show. So it was insanely fun. But my dear friends, please be asking more questions down in the comment section below. I'm so thankful to be able to resume uh, the Atticus Eats series with you all. And I'll try to be as consistent with it as I can, balancing my in-real-life responsibilities as well. Uh, please be sure to check out my link to Twitch, as I mentioned earlier. That's in the description box below. Also, please be sure to check out the link to my Cameo page. If uh, you or someone you know wants to receive a personal video shout-out from me, forward slash brick, please be able to uh, book me down below. I would love to have the opportunity to make your special days even more special and uh, just bring a smile to you or to your loved one. That really means the world to me and I love being able to do that. So uh, please be sure to book me down on Cameo. Check out my channel. Check out all the other videos on my channel. Hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And please be sure to share this video on all of your social media pages. It goes a long way to help me out and push these videos through uh, the YouTube algorithm so others can see it. I love spending time with you all in the comment section as well share with me what you had for lunch dinner breakfast midnight snack afternoon tea uh, dinner supper 11 z's whatever it might be uh, share with me down below what you had with me as we got to eat together sup together have a have a beverage together and i uh, got to hang out and relax all of you are awesome i can't wait to see you all in the next video dove zenia I just want a great life Something where I feel like I just didn't waste time Something I look back and say that was a great time Cause man I just hate when the years pass by the wayside